Hey, welcome back to Stay Tuned. I'm Tony Angelo. This is my new YouTube channel. And uh, today we're going to dig into one of the coolest projects at the shop. This is my buddy Pat's 68 Dodge Dart. It's going to be like a total street freak. Um, he's got this dual quad tunnel ram on top of a 5.9 Magnum, stall headers, razor brown cam. Uh, got a Hemi 4 speed behind it and a Dana 60. So it's all like totally legit uh, street machine parts. It's awesome. Yep. So we're trying to do, obviously it's got a bunch of great old school parts. It's modernized it a little bit. It's got a fully programmable MSD ignition uh, and Pat has this like hydraulic clutch system that should make it, you know, feel like more of a modern car instead of that old school Z bar. Um, but it's kind of a whack system. We have been fighting with it forever. Um, it's got a pull type cylinder that works the actual original clutch fork and we made like the pedal connect to this master up here. Uh, bottom line is it, it doesn't work yet. Um, we're gonna try to do a couple more things, swap master and slave, and I'm gonna make a new pivot. So hopefully we can finally get this thing going. Uh, just real talk, we've got Motor Trend coming in here in a week and we've got a bunch of projects for my main show there, Hot Rod Garage, which you can Go subscribe over there if you want to watch all that stuff. Um, but here, the goal is to get this old dart to finally move under its own power. And we're close, but I'm going to tell you this right now, guys. A lot of the stuff is footage we shot over the summer, uh, months ago, when we weren't quite as good at setting up the camera. So it might sound a little wonky, and it might look a little wonky, but bear with us because I'm telling you, at the end of this thing, it's going to run, it's going to shift through gears, and it's going to move. It's going to be the best. We're going to do like a time like back to the summer when we were full of hope and, and joy and uh, not quite so frustrated with this thing. So here it goes. So the idea is that the rod comes through the firewall and sits about an inch and a half, inch and five eighths uh, off of the pedal here. So we need to make a standoff. What I'm going to do is just weld a nice big piece of uh, metal here. Hopefully something thick enough that we can just tap and then run a bolt through the end of this rod into it. If not, there's a couple other things we've got to do. We're in the back shop now. This is Colin Wolf's metal shop. So he's here to help us out. Find We can raid his, uh, his scrap parts bin and see what we can find. We'll probably see Colin at some point doing his own stuff with some videos. He's pretty good at welding and cutting and fitting metal. So I say he's pretty good. He laughed. Did you hear that? He laughed at him. He's very good at that. No doubt. It's nice. It's nice to know what you're good at. Um, I thought I had something. I know I got a chunk of 7 eighths. Is that too big? 7 eighths is perfect. Uh, okay. That's into the quarter. Yeah, that's a big dog. I thought I had 7 eighths somewhere. You want to see if you got it? I'm looking. Okay. Yeah, the other thing we could do is weld. He's using aluminum tube as a spacer. There's a couple other options we have. You know, with everything that's going on, it's tough to get material, and wait times are crazy. So we've been making most of this car from whatever's laying around. We're gonna keep that party going. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll cut the leg, cut the leg off the table or something. We'll get, the, we'll get it happening. Cut the dick off the statue. There you go. We'll make it go. Cool. All right. So Colin found this little piece of ore that was. Dug out of the Marianas Trench or came out of the Titanic. It's sweet, it's got history, which is nice, so it's cool. It's gonna add a little bit of flavor to the car. It's gonna knock the garbage off of it and then we'll cut it. It's actually perfect size. That's what, an inch? Looks like it. An inch, we'll be able to tap it, weld it on, and it's gonna be nice and strong. Okay, I'll go cut it, come back. Sounds good. Hold on, let me get it. Let me get a shot of his shirt. That's how we do it. Sweet. Cleaned this thing up on the lathe, faced it, and drilled a hole in it, 9.30 seconds, so I can just use a 5.16 to 18 tap 
uh, which we've already confirmed goes right through the rod end on that push rod for our master cylinder. So it's all gonna work out good. threads. That'll bolt right down. It's a lot of metal there. So we'll probably run it pretty hot. Cool. Alright, I've got her all lined up. Gonna take a weld this thing together. It's a big old hunk of metal, so I run a lot of juice through it. Light here. So we've got our big boss welded on here. I'm gonna throw these pedals back in place. I think it's close to perfect. Even okay. In like where it is. Okay. Cool. Let me see if we can get over there. here. That's basically it. Let me do one little washer to stand it off. So there it is. Looking sweet. So we've got the lines hooked up, pedals in. Slave cylinders, and all we gotta do is bleed this thing down and hopefully it uh, moves the clutch. And that means it'll work. Uh, once you do get everything dialed in, you wanna make sure you don't have too much stroke because you can start bending fingers on the clutch diaphragm. Uh, hydraulic stuff has so much power that you gotta watch yourself. Give it a couple of pumps, let me just see what it does. Pump all the way down or? Uh... Just, yeah, come all the way up and down. Okay. okay, yeah, we got some leaks, we got some leaks. Freeze. It's the first thing you check for. Some big boy leaks here. All right, stage one, leaks. Well, it's leaking like a sim. This is my favorite part. Brake fluid is disgusting. Yeah, this isn't even in straight at all. It's looking brass guy. Hey, we're in, we're in trouble here. It looks like ass. I don't like it. Your part number on that cylinder? I think it's CNC uh, cylinder. 
Doesn't have a part number on it, no. It does suck my ass, though. This is hot garbage. All right. So they sent you. They sent us a straight fitting with no taper. A taper is what's going to cram it into that piece of aluminum and make it seal. But uh, I've got one that does have a taper on it, and this will seal. So I'm going to try it. Take my little fitting here, and I ground that little tip off because it's just filling the body of that. Uh, Slave cylinder up the little cylinder itself, so it doesn't need that flare tip on it. Hopefully, this will allow it to go in far enough into that metal that we've already mangled, so that it makes a nice tight seal. If not, Pat will be back online ordering something else. Here we go. All right, some dude just pulled up in a Roadrunner. All right, give me a couple of pumps up and down. So I cut the fork and re-welded it to shorten it to give us a little more stroke. Cut it by about an inch and a half, and it seems to be working awesome. Uh, God, give me a couple more of those, Pat. This pull cylinder is sweet. Keep going, man, come on. Let the people see what they want. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> So what we did originally was put this giant post onto the lever. Uh, this is where the old Z bar picked up, or no, this is where the old Z bar picked up. I got this giant uh, boss, welded it on, and then we decided for a little more throw, we wanted to move it down. So instead of trying to cut this off, we took the entire bracket off the pedal assembly and moved it down here um, and pushed it back too for a little bit more stroke. So all I'm gonna do now is take a little bit of the curve out of this so it sits in here really nicely, and then I will tack it back on. And as soon as we get this thing working, I'll weld it up for good. All right, I'm ready to weld this on for like the fifth time. As you can see, for more uh, stroke, it used to sit up here, the the, uh, the piece that picks up, the big boss that picks up the, uh, the push rod, and we moved it down. As you move it down, away from the pivot, it's gonna stroke more and hopefully displace enough fluid to actually release this clutch. We'll see, if not, we're gonna put a power glide in it, or a 904 or something. Something that doesn't need a clutch pedal. All right, I got my single wave cranking. Is this thing grounded somewhere? There we go. Yeah. Let that cool down for about 45 minutes. I'll try and shove it in the car. Just kidding, just throw it in the toilet. Pull it back out, you're ready to go. Also kidding, don't do that either. Somewhere in the middle. All right, so we are replacing the CNC, actuator cylinder, slave cylinder, with this Willwood one, which has uh, about a quarter inch more stroke on it, because we're not getting enough stroke at the uh, actual clutch fork. And this thing is kind of a ni nicer piece. It's strange to me that the body of the thing is actually what goes towards the clutch fork on this end. So the entire thing is going to move, um, but we'll see how it works. It's definitely uh, making us a little bit optimistic, so we'll find out what happens. Time to put it in. You know, apparently, I only thread this in so far, and it'll start hitting the piss in the backside. So I'm trying to keep that tight. I think right about here we're going to be in business. That's a ton of thread sticking out. Still too much. <laughs> we'll get there. The other one was too short.
All right, so you just shorten that up. You shorten this guy up. Grab one of those little swag tables for my DeWalt guy I bought. And uh, I don't have room for a giant sweet stand-up bandsaw here, but I'll tell you what, that did a pretty great job. And I'm looking, and I'm pretty happy with that fitment right there. Well, hold on, let's go this way. Get the bleeders in the right position. Something like that. There's just a tiny bit of free play here. It's probably perfect. All right. And she is looking good. It's still hot as hell. Ow. All right, so I tacked this little guy that used to rotate to this main spacer block. Uh, everything looks really well in line. It has a little bit of free play, but not much. That's about as much as we want in this situation. And uh, I'm a little worried about contact as this thing rotates as this goes through its arc, but I think it'll be all right. We're gonna find out. Hook up some fluid. Give her some squirts, see what it does. All right. So even though we didn't have enough stroke last time, Pat insisted on putting a three quarter inch master cylinder in there because he doesn't want the pedal effort to be too hard. I told him to harden up, but here we go. All right, let's see some pumps. We're trying to bench bleed it, which is essentially making a circuit uh, where the outlet of the cylinder goes right into the reservoir and make sure no bubbles come out. And you can see we're getting some good fluid displacement right there that's what i'm talking about all right beauty pat is up in the car uh he's got this thing in reverse and it looks like we're getting a lot of travel more than ever with the new willwood three quarter inch master and the new longer stroke pull slave that's also from willwood so you got it in gear it's in gear yep push it down to the floor Ah. Hold up. It's working. It's finally working. We have done this like 40 times. And I never got to move the damn wheel. Alright. Up slow and a grab. Push down. Seems to work awesome. Now, we're out of adjustment essentially. This is as much stroke as we can give it. So if we, we do need to get that clutch to disengage just a little bit more, he's going to go, have to go up in master cylinder size, which will mean a little bit more effort, but a lot more fluid will get moved. So we've got that going for us. Right? Yep. Sweet. How's it feel? Feels good, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's working for the first time. For the first time! Woo! All right, now it's time to drive this car around, except it doesn't have any brakes. So we've got the clutch finally disengaging. Uh, we're going to try to fire this thing up and row it through the gears and just make sure the transmission's working. It's all rebuilt stuff that's never actually worked yet. All right, good shot. And there's no brakes of any kind, so we'll see.
Sweet. All right, let's put on the trailer. Oh, hell yeah. Plus, things sir, have been running since 1996. 1996! So anyway, what's going to happen now is we're going to try to put this thing with no brakes of any kind up onto a trailer and then drive it up into Pat's garage. It's going to be the first time it moved on its own power in 25 years uh, since Pat's owned it, since it's had this motor, all of it. Uh, which is super exciting. He's going to take it home, wire it, put some glass in it, put an interior in it, and then we're going to take it to get it tuned. So, here we go. All right, ready? All right, yeah. Say. Can I go straight back? Yeah, you'll be okay. Straight back. I mean, with yeah. the, is the wheel straight? Wheel straight, yep. Am I lining up good now? You're pretty much lined up. Let me check this wheel though. Good. You're a little close. If anything, drive onto that side a little bit. Go to the right? Yeah. Okay. Go to the right a little bit. That's how you do it with no brakes. Hell yeah! Get Tony to drive it for you. <laughs> I tried to put it in reverse when that Tesla was coming. Yeah. And it was like, ah, and I was like, I'm, I don't know what that was like. You were standing here. I was like, I might, I don't know. I was like, I'll go around again. Woo! All right, sweet. Amazing. Right. Oh, this. Sweet. So that is it for this episode. That was super awesome. I'm so stoked. Car moved like a car. Woo! 25 years. Yep. Yeah, thanks for your help. Hell yeah. All right, we'll get it tuned soon and then see what it really does. All right, stay tuned for more. Thanks, guys.